Hi, I'm Eric Parry from Montreal, Canada. I'm a photographer working mostly with light painting, bullet time, and stop motion techniques. This is Lightspin, a project I did in this studio here with 24 cameras and contemporary dancers. We did some dances in the dark. And then I went to Burning Man in Nevada in very harsh conditions of the desert, create some stop motion sequences and playing with lights. And after that, I went to India to make a music video called Suspended. Now I'm back here in Montreal and I am experimenting with poses on the floor. And this is what I'm going to do for this new project that is called The Ten Collection by Fotolia. And I'm going to work with this guy. Hi, I'm Mike Campo. I'm a digital artist from Michigan, the United States. And I've been doing digital art and retouching for over 15 years professionally. I was going to tell you a little bit about myself, but I figured the best way is to show a few projects that I've done. Probably the first project that I'll show you is Motion and Air. It's one of my most popular projects, and it combines CGI with live action dancing models and photography. Um, the second project that I worked on was in collaboration with another photographer, it was called Future of Sports. And that combined photography done in studio with live action sports doing motion, combining with my CGI futuristic worlds. And finally, the last project I want to talk about was a lot of fun because I did the whole project from beginning to end, from photography to CGI to post-production. But today, I'm here to talk about Collection 10 from Photolia, and I'm going to be working with an awesome photographer, Eric Perry, and him and I are going to be combining our skills to create some awesome images that I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing. When I, when I looked at your work, I thought it was uh, a good idea to, to incorporate the warmth of the light and then, you know, coming to Montreal and in the winter and how cold it was, I thought it would be a great mix of, of warm and cold, whether it's just temperature, but also lighting uh, and subject matter. So, you know, the idea kind of sparked looking through your work and at kind of the location that we're in right now, um, combining the cools and the warms. Um, and how that was going to come together. And I, and I really didn't have a full image in my mind until I got here to the studio and saw you working with the light and saw how you created that warmth and the, and the light had shape to it and, it. and it kind of inspired me to take it to the next level. In the beginning of the project, we went into the little black studio, started to experiment with different kind of lights, different colors, different styling for the, for the model. And we choose to, to take the metallic powder one as this was the most effective uh, effect that we got. Welcome to my studio. This is where I'm doing light painting. This is all black. This, this is much easier to do light painting in a black studio where there's, where there's no uh, light leak, no windows. For this project, I used three cameras. I could have used only one, but having three cameras helped me getting a better angle as I don't see what I'm doing because I'm with the model and I, I don't see the pictures. So. Settings for the cameras are pretty basic. It's about the F9, ISO 800, and always use the bold mode and a remote trigger because you, you will want to, to decide the duration of the exposure every time. Sometimes you go slower, sometimes you go faster, so you need that kind of remote just to trigger the picture. For the lens, you do your focus first, and then you put it in manual mode, just to make sure there's no uh, lag for the focus, because it won't be able to focus in the dark anyway. So I always shoot in raw mode. It's much easier after that to get more details from the highlights and shadows. But for me, it's also about uh, going uh, very uh, deep in the, in the cold colors with the white balance. Uh, most of the time I will shoot with daylight. This is very typical for light painting, but I just slide down to the blues and that gives a totally different mood. Uh, so it's much better for Mike uh, if I shoot rock because he's used to that and he would be able to, to get much more details. Preparing your model is very important. Um, one of the key phrases I'm using is that everything is in the breathing. Okay. We really have to be in sync uh, to make sure the model doesn't move during the exposure. If the model moves, it's gonna get blurry and you don't want that. To do light painting, you need a flashlight or any source of light. In my case, I use a very powerful flashlight, uh, 300 lumens. And I'm using some metallic sheets of paper. So this one here is very light and you can see through the paper. So I'm using it around the model. 
and sometimes I will use the strobe mode which will give stripes instead of a continuous light. The thing that I use for the final image is this one here. It's a rainbow-like metallic sheet of paper and you can clearly see different colors and this is what I use to make a S shape around the model. It can get pretty intense sometimes to, to play in the dark with the lights. So put some music, just experiment with different colors, different style, different shapes. Don't limit yourself with a single shape. Go crazy and try different things and create your own style with that light painting. There are so many possibilities, it's endless. I usually keep the post-processing very simple. I work with the raw file, so we'll play with the white balance, the, some curves and uh, just basic le levels. But for this project, I will just keep all my little cleanup layers and give that to Mike so he can continue from that file. So after we had our final select of the girl in silver, I took that image back and started to create a quick photo illustration so that Eric and I could prepare for the next step, which is shooting outside. We're on top of Mont Royal and it's very cold. It's minus 70 degrees Celsius. And we're here to shoot the background image for the final creation. I did some uh, wide angle shots of the trees uh, and Mike is here to, to get mostly uh, uh, smaller pieces or higher definition crust. Yeah, you're shooting full background composition. I'm shooting parts and pieces like gnarly trees, silhouettes, um, some cool architectural pieces that will get kind of placed into the image and I'm shooting at a pretty high megapixel camera over 36 megapixels so I can crop into little parts and pieces that'll fit into the main image that will match the resolution that you're shooting. So when I got the final image from Eric, I took that into Photoshop and had to isolate it. I have to use the path tool in this case just to get a clean outline of the girl to get started. And then I'll go in with channels and start to isolate hairs and little details on edges to get a, a perfect mass for the girl. And that's kind of the starting point for this project when I work in general is I'll have the hero image and I'll go to a stock site to get either inspiration or look for other assets that I'm not able to shoot myself. I, I'm really looking at light and shadow and making sure that the shadows and the lights are coming from the same places because nothing gives away a composite more than the shadows not matching or lining up or the same light quality in the object compared to the background. That's a dead giveaway that it's a strip and I try to keep all my images to look believable as one shot. My inspiration came from Eric and how he folded his piece of paper and the shapes it created while he was moving it in the light itself. So I tried to mimic that in my CGI sculpture as well. And using the light from Eric's shot, I used that to illuminate my sculpture that I built in CGI. So when working on the CGI project, I'm using um, Luxology Modo. Uh, it's a 3D software package that I love because it, it does high resolution renderings pretty fast and it has a nice rendering engine. So when I was using Modo, I was building an object in the shape of Eric's light. So to do that, I would create a polygon and then create a curved line that kind of mimics the shape and the style of Eric's light painting. And then I take that polygon and I extrude it along that path. And then after it's extruded, I will take key points in that, in that object and start to scale it, rotate it, and, and blend it a little bit so that it's not a consistent shape. Because when you curve extrude, it's gonna make it consistently the same shape from beginning to end. So I try to add a little bit of character, some bends, some folds into it until I get it to where I, I like it and then I set up the lighting and rendering. So the final portion of the CGI is setting up the lighting and getting it ready to render into Photoshop. So what I did was I created uh, illumin illuminant shapes that mimicked Eric's light painting and put them in the scene and then hid them from the camera so you couldn't see the light, but it caused the reflections and the lighting on the model just as if it was there in the studio while Eric was shooting. 
So once I had that set up, and then I set up a render with different layers, and, and what I will do is a shadow pass, a reflection pass, a diffuse pass, and then alpha passes for different segments of the object. And the reason I do these is I can bring them into Photoshop and control the lighting and shadow on the object after it's rendered, so I don't have to go back to the 3D program to get different quality render at the end. When I'm compositing objects together in backgrounds, it's really important to keep in mind where these objects have contact points and where they interact with each other. Because how light bounces off of objects nearby or casts shadows from one object to the other. So one trick to get this technique is to take the, an eyedropper and sample a color from an object nearby or behind your hero object and then use that color to either brush in on the edges or where it would influence on a soft light or an overlay layer. And you kind of play with the opacity to get the look that you want and to make sure it blends in nicely. So now that I have all my images composited and they all look believable, the image usually has kind of a hyper real color quality to it. So this is when I get into the, the final color grading of the image. So one of the tricks that I have to finish my images is using a plugin called Topaz Adjust. I've over the past few months been playing with it and honing a certain style and settings within Topaz to create the look I want. So as a CGI artist, it's really important to understand the idea of light and shadow and how to use it. And the best way is to go to a photo studio or watch a photographer work. You know, I first want to say thanks for Fotolia for bringing me to Montreal to work with Eric. It was a awesome experience. I, you know, I learned a lot about light painting. I've always kind of seen it and was interested in it. So um, it, it was a great experience. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Fotolia. This is something I, 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 I wanted to experiment since a long time to, to bring some graphic element to my pictures because it's always dark around my, my light. It was interesting to see how Mike filled the empty spaces of my pictures with stock photos and CGI elements.